Dude, it is impossible to go to American college and not have debt, okay? Virtually impossible. As someone who works in federal politics, I find it a bummer that it's a fall rollout that begins in election time. Still great news, though, but friends are frustrated awaiting. I fuck with DA marijuana registration by Kamala for election strategy, though. I'm fine with politicians doing shit specifically for elections as long as they're doing shit. It is frustrating to have it be so obviously political, but that's politics in general. It's not the best possible outcome, but it's still good. This is complete horseshit. Don't be duped again. I think given the circumstances or the setbacks, if we are to look at it from the institutional hurdles created, oftentimes created specifically so that people can go, oh, f we can't do anything. This is still a step in the right direction. It's still far from what was originally promised. What has been promised? What was promised is student loan debt relief across the board. And Biden has done some piecemeal student loan debt relief uh, here and there throughout the entire four years of the administration. But what was promised was obviously just yeeting most of the student loan, student loan debts. So during an appearance of Wisconsin, President Biden said 10 million borrowers could see debt relief for of at least $5,000 and the plan could help rally support among young voters is what the uh, New York Times uh, byline is on this. Obviously, it's still, it's still too little. It's definitely too late. The plan would potentially reduce the amount that 25 million borrowers still owe on their undergraduate and graduate loans. It would wipe away the entire amount for more than 4 million Americans. Although altogether, the White House official said 10 million borrowers could see debt relief for $5,000 or more. This is a way to, I guess, sidestep the Supreme Court somehow. He announced it here in front of you guys in Madison, Wisconsin. The reason for why he did that, of course, is because it is a college town and it also is a very important swing state that he is desperately trying to hold on to in spite of the ongoing genocide that has made it more difficult for him to hold on to. This article from the Forbes will explain to you what he had originally promised. This is, of course, from October 7, 2020. Biden, I will eliminate your student debt. Reaffirming his commitment to broad student loan forgiveness at a town hall in Miami on Tuesday, Biden, in a response to a question from a young person concerned about student loan debt and lack of economic opportunity, responded with, you get all these degrees and you get all this debt and you get in a position where you can't get a job because no one is hiring or they're hiring at very low wages. I'm going to eliminate your student debt if you come from a family making less than $125,000 and went to a public university. Biden also said, I'm going to make sure everyone gets $10,000 knocked off of their student debt in response to economic hardships caused by the pandemic. Biden further proposed giving young people a $15,000 credit towards a down payment on their first home. This is how people accumulate wealth, he said. This is how people get started. We have to recognize you and advance you. You are the future. I am not the type of person who will ever criticize trying to buy votes. I think it's a very cynical attitude that goes against the very nature of representative democracy. The entire purpose of the democratic process is to buy votes. Oftentimes, the only votes that our legislators are looking to buy is the votes, or rather the outsized political power, social capital that you gain from corporations and the wealthy. Rich people do not even ask to have their votes be bought. They demand it. They demand it through legislation. They demand it through lobbying. So when someone is seeking to buy your vote when you're the average citizen we we take offense to it almost i find that to be odd i don't think we should take offense to it we should welcome it now of course it'd be much nicer if he actually followed through on his promises to buy your vote and did not rely on the unconditional support that he will get from you because the other side is much worse this is this hinges on the democratic party's modus operandi this is how the democratic party operates because they know that the other side is much much worse now, of course, the promise that he had made, this one right here, he failed to achieve. One, because it was a broad promise. It was a big promise. It was one within his legal purview. It was one within his legal rights. He does control the Department of Education. They have abolished student loan debt before. They have put a pause on student loan debt repayments. If you guys recall, many of you have student loans. You probably noticed when your student loans, you did not have to pay them anymore. That was during COVID. Technically, because he has that promise, he could extend it permanently. Technically, he has that power. Oh my God, here we go. PolitiFact, Biden promise tracker. Forgive student loan debt from public, and college, public colleges and universities. 
in the works. <laughs> okay. Anyway, legal challenges were amounted by Republicans across the country, attorneys generals that are representing the interests of financial tools, for example, like debt repayment, like loan repayment companies and whatnot, immediately opened up legal challenges to gum up the works as best as possible. It was ridiculous because they just kept suing and suing and suing. Even if the companies themselves were not looking to sue, the attorney general would sue them without the company's prior knowledge. They claimed that this was unlawful, an unlawful use of executive authority to enact the costly transfer of wealth from taxpayers who have not taken out federal student loans to those who have. They also said that this would hurt the bottom line of debt refinancing institutions, which is true, but f them. But regardless, if you look at the New York Times article, and I'm looking at it right now, Mr. Biden's announcement was a presidential do-over. The New York Times says in the summer of 2022, we put into motion a plan to wipe out 400 billion in student debt for about 43 million borrowers. That was blocked by the Supreme Court, which said he exceeded his authority. In the months since, Biden has waived small amounts of debt using existing programs. But now he's attempting a larger effort to clo uh, closer to the scale of his first try. The original plan relied on a law called HEROES Act, which the administration argued allowed the government to waive student debt during a national emergency like the COVID pandemic. The justice disagreed after Republican attorneys general and other challenged the debt waiver plan. The new approach is different. For months, Mr. Biden's education department has been developing regulations using long process authorized by the Higher Education Act. Instead of an across the board waiver of debt, the new approach targets five groups of borrowers, those whose loans have ballooned because of interest, borrowers who have been paying for decades, those who have economic hardship, and those who qualify for existing debt relief programs, but have not applied. And people whose loans come from schools that have since been denied certification or have lost eligibility for federal student aid programs, which is ridiculous. They shouldn't have to pay anyway. That's like, a, that last part is, is crazy. Administration officials said because the new approach is based on a different law, it is more likely to survive the expected challenges. They said lawyers for the White House and the Education Department have studied the Supreme Court ruling and have designed new programs to make sure it does not violate the principles laid out by the justices. But lawyers for those who oppose the approach are likely to argue that waiving the debt is unfair to those who already paid back their loans or never took out college loans in the first place. That argument helps sway the justice in the last case. It's a bullshit argument. And the justices are not looking to be swayed, even though they have an honest opinion on this, an honest approach on this. The justices are operating on the boundaries of political, uh, on their political interest. They are there to operate as a vestige of the Republican Party. That is what the reactionary justices are there to do. This argument is an idiotic argument on its face, regardless. The notion that, oh, well, what about the people that paid for it? It's unfair to them is insane. That is not the American way, or it should not be the theoretical American way. The notion that like, if there was, for example, a cure for cancer, that like former cancer patients or the friends and family members of like those who have fallen to cancer would not advocate against that cancer treatment being opened up to every single person. It's so dumb. I had cancer. I fixed it the right way. You can't get this cure. I suffered this injustice, so others must suffer as well, is idiotic. Also, the notion that Americans ever have cared or the Supreme Court has ever cared about fairness is really silly. They do not care. Capitalism is an inherently unfair system. Ridiculous. Fairness only is used or rather weaponized as a counter argument when you are helping a broad swath of the society that is normally not helped. Neil McCluskey, the director of the Center for Educational Freedom at Cato Institute, called the new plan dangerous policy that is unfair to taxpayers and would cause colleges and universities to raise their prices. The Constitution gives Congress, not the president, the authority. Like, see, this is how you know they're throwing shit at a wall because they're trying to cover from every angle. They're like, oh, well, colleges are really expensive and they'll get even more expensive because they'll get comfortable. It's a dangerous policy. Oh, it's unfair. It's unfair to those who paid. Well, as someone who has not only been fortunate enough to achieve financial security that I can pay my own student loans, my parents' student loans, my brother's student loans, I say no one else should have to suffer. This is ridiculous. What a bullshit f***ing argument. The Constitution gives Congress, not the president, the authority to enact law, and the Supreme Court has already struck down a unilateral mass student debt cancellation scheme by Biden administration. It would stick taxpayers with bills for debts other people choose uh, chose for their own financial advancement. We never have this kind of smoke for any kind of any kind of executive action in uh, any other direction. This is within the legal purview of the ex uh, the executive authority, the executive office. The Department of Education is controlled by the White House. We have already exercised this control. 
Where'd you go to school? Do you have any debt? I did. I used to have debt. Yes. Every dude, it is impossible to go to American college and not have debt. Okay. Virtually impossible. You have to be really, really, and I mean really rich. You have to be what my haters imagine my lifestyle is like a son of a multi billionaire Turkish oligarch with a major trust fund to be able to go to American college without any loans whatsoever. And I say this as someone who got a shit ton of scholarships as well. There was still a lot of shit to pay for. It is also one of the major principles behind throwing endless bodies at the American military machine. College is the only viable solution for upward, upward social mobility. It's not even that viable as it once was. It is now a requirement. And because of how costly college is, the Department of Defense uses that as an opportunity to engage in a poverty draft. The legal challenges will take months to resolve, and that could leave the debt relief plan in limbo as voters go to the polls in November to choose between Mr. Biden and former President Donald Trump. Members of Mr. Biden's administration fanned out across the country on Monday to talk about the new plan, betting that it will rally support among voters who were disappointed that the court blocked the first one, which would have eliminated up to $20,000 in debts for tens of millions of borrowers. An objectively good thing, if you recall, which I was very much on board with, which I rode for Biden on. There have been a couple moments of clarity and a couple really awesome moments in the Brandon administration. Fully facilitating the withdrawal from Afghanistan was one of those moments which everybody yelled at him over. This was another one which everybody also yelled at him over because it does seem like the entirety of American mainstream media, all of our corporations, all of our wealthy are just undesirable, incredibly reactionary monsters when it comes to doing good things and doing right by those who have been over by the systems. There's never a moment where we can, God forbid, help those who need it. There was never this level of discourse over PPP loan relief. It was a given. Those loans had conditions. None of those conditions were met. Those loans were given for a purpose. The purpose was to continue paying workers that weren't going into work to help facilitate that payment because we did not have like unilateral, federally controlled labor structure where every single person or some kind of federal banking uh, structure. So we had to do it in the most American way possible with cash infusions to corporations. Those corporations, small businesses, large businesses alike, never took those PPP loans and then met the conditions such as paying their workforce, but it did not matter. That was a tremendous amount of loans, tremendous, massive, massive number. I don't remember the exact, I don't recall the exact size of the PPP loans in general, but notice how nobody made a big stink about it. Why? Because that was a, that was a cash transfer to corporations. Does that not strike you as odd that when corporations get a cash transfer from the federal government with conditions and nobody meets those conditions at all. Here's uh, the PPP loans that cost nearly double what Biden's student debt forgiveness would have. Here's how the programs compare. Almost every single person that is a small business owner, big business owner that took a PPP loan, which includes members of Congress, mind you, had no issues with the $785 billion that was forgiven. $790 billion in PPP loans. Out of the $790 billion, $757 billion was forgiven. Wow. Nobody chirped about that shit, though. God forbid you bring that shit up. And it wasn't even utilized appropriately. I don't want to hear about the fact that the PPP loan relief came from congressional authorization, whereas student loan debt restructuring or student loan debt relief actually comes from the executive office. I don't give a shit, okay? I care about the impact of the legislation. I care about the impact of the actions. I don't give a shit about how, it, how the sausage was made in this regard. This kind of structural hurdle is only talked about when it's actually simply a conversation about helping the poor. These conversations are incredibly silly. And even on the institutional hurdles conversation, there are ways out of it, and yet people choose not to take them.